So in this final unit, we are going to show you some multilingual features of Sketch Engine. Uh, you can, uh, to create a parallel corpus, you can upload uh, a bilingual file in the TMX, XLIF or uh, comma separated format. So now I'm going to upload a, a TM, TMX, a TMX file that I have uh, created using Memocus Aligner. Um, this corpus will be uh, English Slovene and it's again to the area, to the topic of uh, renewable energy. Uh, it consists of uh, an EU directive in English and Slovene and you can find in, uh, under materials um, the same file in four language pairs. So once you upload the corpus, uh, two corpora will be created, the English and the Slovenian part, and now you can um, use all the um, all the standard uh, sketch engine features, uh, except that um, you can now also search uh, the parallel corpus, so uh, the aligned um, segments. Um, for example, now I was uh, looking, I was searching for the term power, and um, the display is bilingual, so I get English and Slovene aligned sentences. Um, I can also switch uh, back to the keyword in context view, uh, such as here, but in general this allows me to explore an expression in the original and its uh, translations. Um, the simple query, the parallel query, also allows me to uh, limit, to, to search on both sides of the corpus. So I can now, for example, limit my uh, query to um, all occurrences of power in English and something beginning with energ in Slovenian. Uh, so this will um, uh, confine my search to occurrences of power uh, which are translated by energia, energia, and so on. If we move on to the word list options, um, when I'm working with a parallel corpus, I can, of course, um, use this corpus monolingually. So I can produce, for example, again, a list of all nouns or um, noun lemmas for the English part of the corpus. Uh, like we've seen in the previous units. So um, this is uh, the list. But I also have an added feature which is bilingual terminology extraction. Uh, and by clicking on the language, um, I can now extract bilingual term candidates. And as you can see, uh, those candidates, uh, unlike before when we were using this feature mo um, monolingually, uh, you have a mixed list of multi-word and single-word terms with their proposed uh, equivalent. Some of them are, I know that you probably don't understand Slovene, um, for those who don't, some of these hits are okay and um, some are not okay, uh, which is uh, normal, let's say, because the corpus I was using was rather small, so that the frequencies of, um, of multi-word terms are probably quite low. But still, um, the sketch engine will try to extract candidates, and um, if you find the result uh, useful, of course, uh, from a larger corpus it is likely to be better. Um, you, ca you can um, save it and uh, then work with it uh, as uh, in, in some other uh, application. So you can save it either as TBX, so uh, to import into a term-based management system, or you can save it as TXT. For some other things, it makes sense sometimes uh, to simply open two separate windows of Sketch Engine and then uh, perform um, bilingual queries simply in two separate sessions. So now um, I have the English part of the corpus on one side 
and I'm going to uh, create the list of nominal uh, lemmas just uh, like before uh, on on the left hand side uh, so this is what you've seen before and I'll simply do the same thing for the Slovenian part of the corpus please note that here I'm using a slightly different regular expression with s because the tags uh, for the Slovenian part are in Slovene uh, so if you're unsure uh, please check the tag attributes of uh, your corpus and I will simply create a frequency list of uh, nouns for the Slovene part and um, this uh, now allows me to do some um, comparisons on both sides uh, for example uh, it's a good idea to compare the frequencies of some key nouns here uh, as uh, you will uh, find um, differences uh, between them. It's also a good idea to save those lists for future reference or for use in another tool such as Excel. We can also uh, compare the uh, automatically extracted terms. So here I have on both sides the single word terms and uh, I see a particular difference. In English there is bioliquid as the extracted keyword on uh, rank 1 and I don't find a similar uh, expression in Slovene. So I can check the concordance of bioliquids um, and I see that it occurs together with biofuels, so there are biofuels and bioliquids. And if I'm interested, uh, what is the translation of bioliquid in Slovene? It's best to perform a parallel query, of course. So um, now that uh, I searched for uh, bioliquids as a parallel query, I find that um, the translation is actually a multi-word term in Slovenian, uh, tekoča, biogoriva, uh, which is why the frequency of biogoriva or biogorivo uh, is uh, higher in Slovene than in English. So what do I do with the extracted term candidates? Uh, if I had saved them, then I can simply import them into an Excel spreadsheet and then um, try to evaluate them or select the uh, terms that I would like to explore further. So here I've started from a single word uh, list of nouns and I'm marking uh, the keywords that I would like to explore further. As you can see, I'm skipping um, general words uh, that are normally found in EU directives such as member, article, commission, states, community and so on. But I'm keeping um, words or uh, keywords that I think are uh, specialized for or are um, typical for the domain of energy and uh, I would like to explore them further. Um, at this stage uh, it's um, not so important whether uh, you skip uh, a term or not because this is just uh, the beginning, this is just the first stage so uh, we are going to select some nouns and then um, create a list of multi-word terms uh, deriving from those nouns and explore the so-called term nests um, that are uh, built around those keywords. So um, once I have uh, selected some of the candidates that I would like to explore, if I want to um, limit my view only on those that I've selected, I can employ a simple filter in Excel and uh, display only the rows marked uh, with an X. Uh, and uh, this is uh, 
quite a handy way also either of uh, copying those candidates somewhere else and now I can start exploring them. So let's say that I have selected the first um, term from there, the uh, uh, lemma energy and uh, I would now like to see uh, energy as pre-modifier and the nouns that follow it. So um, I've uh, created a CQL uh, query and this is the frequency list of um, bigrams, so of uh, two word terms beginning with energy. Uh, this is again a good starting point. I'm going to save it as text so that I can later on uh, import it into Excel. So energy plus any noun. Uh, Excel will treat uh, the exported list as a delimited data. So um, it will put uh, the term candidate in one column and the frequency in the second column and I can simply import them uh, into my spreadsheet, uh, delete the first three rows and then uh, I have again um, a list of uh, candidates beginning with energy uh, which uh, again I can start marking or selecting uh, or simply selecting the ones that I think are valid terms to include in a term base or something like that. Of course at this stage I uh, might have questions or I might be unsure as of the status of a certain term. So for example energy content I'm not so sure whether it is a term so I can check the concordance and after I had seen that it is indeed are uh, specialized and occurs in the same form. Mm. And now I'm going to extract uh, the uh, bigrams ending with energy. So I'm looking for adjectives preceding energy uh, on the English part of the corpus. Uh, the same procedure. Uh, I create a frequency list with renewable energy coming first uh, and then some other multi-word units ending in energy and again I'm going to save it uh, without the heading and uh, perhaps now I also want to have nouns preceding energy and now I get a very short list and I see something strange at the beginning of this list, namely means energy. So if I want, I can uh, check any of these collocations and see whether they are indeed terminological or not. And here I see that means is not really a noun, it's a verb here. And um, by coincidence, without really intending to do so, I find three definitions of uh, aerothermal energy, geothermal energy, and hydrothermal energy. Uh, please ignore the strange characters. So this is probably a conversion issue, but in any case, those are perfectly perfectly nice definitions of those three terms uh, related to energy. So now I can continue compiling my information in my uh, spreadsheet. As you can see, I have now uh, joined the two lists. So now I have uh, uh, ener the single word energy and the terms that I have found um, containing energy. I've also copied here some of the definitions that I found. And in the definition, I also see that um, some important terms are still missing. For example, um, the definition above mentions wind, solar and ocean energies, which for some reason hadn't been extracted 
um, as um, nominal compounds so I'm going to add them manually to ensure better coverage of my um, term collection so I'm adding solar energy and um, ocean energy as important um, important kinds of energy and uh, I can also start entering translations or translation equivalents into my spreadsheet and uh, this is an iterative process so uh, whenever I want to find some new information I will probably return to sketch engine to the parallel concordance and uh, check um, check the equivalence and also check for further multi-word units. So here, when I was looking for renewable energy, I find that actually in most cases, renewable energy is part of a larger phrase, such as um, renewable energy sector, renewable energy sources, or even a five-word term, National Renewable Energy Action Plan. So uh, whenever I find additional information that um, I hadn't extracted before, I will of course amend my list uh, and add information as I go along. So um, for this uh, lengthier phrase, um, which is typical of a, a legislative uh, text uh, such as the EU directive, I have found the following uh, translation in Slovene and will add it. 